I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Words that we sang in the responsorial psalm call to mind certainly what we are about every time we come together to celebrate, to pray together as a community of faith, to celebrate the Eucharist. But I can't help but think of how 175 years ago people began to praise our loving God, to praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people, assembling as this community of faith that is St. Joseph's Parish here in Lancaster. What a grace it is for us as we come to celebrate this anniversary tonight, to call them to mind, to remember those years that have passed and the richness of tradition, of cultural diversity which continues, beginning primarily among the, among the German Catholic community and now enriched with the expression of the Burmese Catholic community and the Nigerian communities and others as well. How enriched the church is this people, assembly of the people who the psalmist went on to say that all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before him. And here we are, fulfilling that reality. We call to mind and we remember them and pray for those who have gone before us in this parish community. So many would come because of Jesus Christ, the belief in the resurrection of Jesus and his real presence as the risen Lord in the sacraments, most especially the Eucharist, but encountering the risen Lord. You know, the Easter season really reminds us of, a, of the opportunity that we have as Christians that they did not have when they were followers of Jesus in, when he walked this earth. The risen Lord is intimately present to every one of us. When he walked this earth, they encountered him one-on-one, -on -one, as many did. But we have him with us, each one of us, literally becoming part of us through the Eucharist and living within us. It's that magnetism of Jesus, the promise, the message of the gospel that has drawn people to the community of faith for 175 years. They see in Jesus that intimate connection. As he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You cannot bear fruit apart from me. We give thanks to God for the fruitfulness of the faith over so many generations. The fruitfulness that has been manifested in so many, many ways. One way comes to mind, the fruitfulness that has been manifested in religious vocations. Also true in countless, obviously, families and married life. Fruitful vocations to the single life have been manifesting that fruitfulness of the relationship with Jesus. But I call to mind, in a particular way, as we celebrate this anniversary, the many vocations to the consecrated life and to the priesthood that have come from this parish over many years. And I say that because long before I, I knew that I would ever be the Bishop of Lancaster, <laughs> or <laughs> Harrisburg. <laughs> That's Lancaster too, right? <laughs> long before I knew that, I started to work in 1989 as a young priest in Catholic social services in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. And that first summer of 1989, I, I met part of the fruitfulness of this parish. A wonderful expression of that in the religious life of Sister Bernadine Schmalhofer. Sister Bernadine, a faithful social worker over many generations of, of social workers, but as a religious of the Most Blessed Trinity, living that, that charism so faithfully. She inspired me from the first day I met her. And by the way, she's looking forward to celebrating her 102nd birthday on May the 2nd. I spoke with her this afternoon because she had written to me that she was so saddened that she could not be physically present for this celebration today. So I said to her, I said, what, what Sister Bernadine, what would you like to say to the, those who gather for this celebration today? She said, 
she wanted to, re, to recall, she would want to recall the vibrancy and the fruitfulness of the parish in her life. That the parish community was the center of their lives. She said most of the families lived within walking distance of the church. And they came in great numbers. And she did call to mind as well the vocations, the many vocations that came from the parish, including her nephew, Father John Schmalhofer, who, who passed away three years ago. Is that, the anniversary of his death was actually yesterday. But we call to mind that fruitfulness of a life well lived that has been manifested time and time again by going to Jesus Christ and living the faith. And I believe, by the way, that Sister Bernadine is watching on live stream from the Trinitarian Mother House in Northeast Philadelphia. So hi, Sister Bernadine. There's lots of people here today, just like in the old days, right? But the beauty of this reality of a parish centered in Jesus Christ calls us to rekindle that same flame that has animated the parish for so many years in our own lives, in our own journey as Christians, as we do during this Easter season then to recognize that closeness to the risen Lord that we have in the sacramental life of the church, in the living word that speaks to our hearts. And so this message of Jesus today invites us to call that to mind. You know, the, the work of bearing fruit through keeping the commandments, that is a, a work ultimately that Jesus does in us by allowing him to work in our lives, by welcoming him in, into our hearts and keeping in mind what it means to remain in him. Jesus says, you remain in me if you keep my commandments. That, that constant effort to seek holiness of life and to let Jesus nourish us and bring us to that deeper sense of communion with him. And it also involves, as we all know, the work of the, the vine grower, who Jesus tells us prunes the branches. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. We recognize that that work of growing in holiness does involve the regular pruning. You know, that happens to us in, in, a, in one of those wonderful ways that the parish community has served so many over the years. You know, the pruning happens when we go, go make a good confession, right? We acknowledge our need for the things that we need to let go of or be separated from, to let the Father prune away so that we can bear fruit. What needs to be pruned in you? I know I've got my own list for myself. I think we all do. To let the Father do his work through acknowledging our need to be detached from whatever keeps us along that road to fruitfulness in the Lord. My goodness, that fruitfulness and has been manifested, as I've said, but it still is a mission that is alive. It's not just in the past, it can't be. It needs to be a mission that is alive now with all of us in a particular way, all of you parishioners of St. Joseph's. You know, the absent apostles have, has such vibrancy in the church, right? We see it in so many ways. We see that fruitfulness coming about by so many people coming, coming to the faith, the preaching of the apostles, the message that's given them, and even in the faces we're reminded here of opposition, great persecution that they faced. Here St. Paul is trying to engage with people and, try, and really very boldly speaking out, as we're told, moving about freely in Jerusalem and speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. He debates, he speaks out, but they tried to kill him. Living our faith in our world today and in our culture is going against the trends, isn't it? Very often. Please, God, at this moment, for us in this country, living our faith doesn't mean they're going to try to kill us. 
But we know throughout the history of the church that's been the case in so many ways. Many of the people who have come to this parish over many years of its 175 year history were fleeing hostility. They came to the United States to seek religious freedom, to be able to worship freely. But yet, even in the face of opposition, the church, we're told, throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. As we think of ourselves in our own journey then, throughout the celebration of this Mass today, let's let that Word of God proclaimed speak to our hearts very personally. Let the Lord meet us there. Be reminded, I am the vine, you are the branches. You cannot bear fruit apart from me. And even as we do acknowledge that fruit that has been experienced through our, our life of faith, in our families, in our living our vocations, we also need to invite the Father in, the vine grower, to show us what needs to be pruned, and let him do his work. And through that growth in faith, that holiness of life, that vision of the Acts of the Apostles, which has been realized generation after generation and continues to live on in this community, but in a new way as a result of celebrating this 175th anniversary. May the words spoken of the early church in the Acts of the Apostles become even more vivid and alive in Lancaster, in the St. Joseph Parish community. May it be that the church throughout Lancaster will be at peace that it will be being built up, will walk in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, grow in numbers. Happy anniversary, and God bless you all.